my soccer universe. At noon today we had the draw for the Nations League playoffs, all three of them, plus also for the quarterfinal. And of course we need to talk about it, who are the winners, losers and so on. But before we get into the UEFA Nations League playoff draw, I first want to apologize. I really wanted to actually publish a video that goes through where we are currently at in World Cup qualifying only assuming that we have South America and Asia to deal with. Nah, Africa is also underway, we have also CONCACAF underway, everything is un underway. So uh, preparation for the whole thing with graphics became very involved and I guess this will come out just ahead of the UEFA draw for the World Cup qualifying groups. Apologies for that, but you know, it is gonna happen, that much is for certain. Now, let's talk about the UEFA Nations League draw and before we go into the draw itself, just a few notable points. The draw procedure, I think, was really badly done. They had always a seeded and an unseeded pot and they drew all the teams from one pot and then from the other. Why not do it pairing by pairing? I think this would hold the attention way more because, you know, the first pot, it doesn't really matter. You don't need to pay attention. You just need to wait for the second pot to see the pairings that are happening because it doesn't really matter who gets out first or last. I actually think you could have sped it up by having the seeded teams just already being fixed and then put the unseeded teams there. And yes, everyone wants to have the name out, but I think this would have been a better way of doing it than just going through the motions. As I said, I think the best way would have been to, you know, go first pot one, take one team out, pot two, take another team out, and da 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 until you're at the last one. And yes, for the last two, it's pretty obvious what the fixture is, but I think this holds way more attention than the way they have done it. It didn't hold my attention and I'm someone who actually loves the Ross and that did not do it for me. And it got even worse then for the quarterfinal draw. The way that the first legs were set up, as soon as Portugal came out, it was pretty clear this can go only one way. That was actually quite the downer, I have to say as well. But you know, just a few misgivings from my side. Let's look into the draw itself. We'll start at the bottom and we saw that Gibraltar will face Latvia and Malta will face Luxembourg. So that means that the two weaker teams in each pot play each other and the two stronger teams play each other. Which means ahead of the draw actually Malta had a 40% chance of advancing, now they only have a 34% chance. Both fixtures are very much evenly matched up. Next up, we had League C, uh, quite an interesting one as well. I think Slovakia Slovenia as the last draw is probably the standout tie. Not only for the fact that those are probably the two strongest teams on each side of the draw, but also naming wise. I also think that Armenia against Georgia is really interesting. Those are two former League D teams and, you know, both have the Soviet history with them as well and both kind of beleaguered by Russia. In addition, in that one, Georgia, also 67%. We also have Ireland playing Bulgaria. Yeah, not the greatest of the draw for, for Bulgaria and Iceland playing the Kosovo, which is a level one, not as level though as Slovakia and Slovenia, which again, just because the names are so similar, is probably a duel to really look forward to. Quick wardrobe change and we look at the playoff between Leagues A and League B, where of course Austria was featured in, my home country. And boy, was this an interesting draw. First of Turkey against Hungary. I call it the Gulash Derby because, you know, Gulash is actually a Turkish name of a food that was given to the prisoners when the Ottomans were besieging Hungary. So yeah, it became the national dish. So therefore Gulash Derby. Ukraine against Belgium. You would think that both of these teams were the strongest in each of their respective pots. So I think that makes this one quite interesting. We already had this at the Euros, Austria against Serbia. There's so much historical tension between those two nations. It's really, really big. Add to it, there's so many Serbians living in Austria themselves that, yeah, this will be an away game. If it is, we will play in Vienna, maybe we will play in Linz, not as much, but you don't have as many people there. But yeah, it's a really hot one. I think on a sporting level, it's not a bad draw, but given all the surroundings of an Austria with Serbia duel, not an easy one. And then Greece against Scotland. I think that's interesting because we know Greece already had beaten England once. Now they play against Scotland. Does this show us a little bit about the relation between the two teams? Yeah, 
Let's see. What's also remarkable is that in three of these four pairings, the team that comes from League B is actually favored. We have Turkey slightly favored over Hungary. We have Austria slightly favored over Serbia and Greece slightly favored over Scotland, whereas Belgium are favorites over Ukraine. And finally, we look, of course, at the quarterfinal draw for League A. And the way I present the pairings here is not the way that they were drawn, but also already how it will show up in the tree. So the first two make a first semifinalist or the first finalist, if you would like. And the second two pairings make the second finalist between them and also sets up the semifinal. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit tired of some of the pairings that we got. I mean, Italy, Germany is definitely the standout tie. I can never get tired of that one. This is an absolute classic. The winner of that one will face the winner of Denmark against Portugal. That's probably the one tie where I don't have any association with except that Portugal probably will be the favorites in there and I would expect them to move on. But then we have two former World Cup finals, Netherlands against Spain. It's always a cumbersome tie for the simple reason that you never know how will they match up with their jerseys. It's always a trouble with these two teams. This time around, probably each can wear their home against their away jersey, but it's always messy. Of course, the Dutch will not be happy that they have to play Spain again, because Spain is the toughest draw in there. And France have to play against Croatia, and that's the one tie I really didn't want to see again. I have seen Croatia against France so often. I mean, they meet almost in any Nations League. We have the World Cup final from 2018 in there as well. So I really wanted to see something different than Croatia against France. However, as soon as Portugal was drawn with Denmark, this was the only option that we got. France are, of course, and history have shown the big favorites against Croatia, and all the other city teams are also slight favorites, with especially Portugal against Denmark, another rather lopsided one, one would say. And as I said, let's say Germany would then face Portugal, if we have the favorites moving on, and Spain against France in the other semifinal. I think that's quite enticing. And I would think that one of these four nations will probably host the Final Four tournament as well. We also have to look at who are now the favorites. We just have to look at top eight. Spain isn't still the big favorite in 21% chance. France a little bit closer with 17, so it seems to be between those two, but they are on collision course in the semifinal, which makes it interesting. Germany and Portugal in three and four got a little bit harder for Portugal, Germany moving up in third place. And maybe we get an upset of one of the other teams. The Dutch moving up because the pathway into the final got easier, but you have to get past Spain. But if the Dutch get past Spain, I would like their chances as well. Lastly, when will these games be played? Well, all the playoffs and the quarterfinal, except for the one between League C and D, will be played already in the March international break. The one between C and D will be played in March 26, which seems weird, but you know, the World Cup qualifying schedule wouldn't work otherwise, because then the draw will become really an impossibility. And then we have, of course, the final four. So after the quarterfinals that will be played in June of 2026 and then we go into the Club World Cup, it all just is too cramped and doesn't make any sense. But let's see all, all about that. In any case, please let me know what you thought about the draw. I think overall the pairings that we got, there are quite some interesting ones in there and it will hold my attention. I had more a problem with the draw procedure, but you know, that's me. I'm a little bit of a nerd about that. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'll talk to you soon about more things about Nations League. And as I promised, there will be a video on World Cup qualifying coming somewhere-ish 10th of December, roughly. Be it as it may, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!